Sure. So um, I was part of the Johannesburg Homelessness Network, and we were just helping the city of Joburg try to accommodate homeless people. Um, so we had just had a great amount of people, um, and yeah, we, people were just saying, we need people to run shelters. Can you help? Um, it's always been a dream of mine. It's one of the things that I've really um, wanted to do for a long time. It's the whole reason I have Bountiful Thirsty. Feeding people was a stepping stone to housing people. Okay. Um, yeah. So this to me is kind of like more like a dream come true or like a, a longing of mine fulfilled. Mm. I think um, overall it's going pretty well. The first few days there was a lot of like work guys. Um, like we've had haircuts. We've had a lot of like just admin getting everything we need kind of here. A lot of the guys have been resting quite a bit. Um, mm. You know, just kind of everybody getting into the routine, kind of creating like a family kind of vibe. Mm. We all know what happens when and how things get done. Um, but now today is like the first day where everything seems to be running completely smoothly. We've got everything we need. Everybody's mm. feeling a bit more comfortable and relaxed. Mm. Um, so yeah, things have been going really well. Um, we have one last space empty. Um, so we've okay. had some people come and we've had some people choose to leave or be asked to leave. Um, so we've had some bumps, but overall it's, I think it's been pretty good. The first was that we have a shelter at Rosebank Union Church. I didn't <laughs> think it was possible, but here we are. And it was so actually incredibly wow. easy to get it to go through. Like even working with the city of Joburg and getting things mm. signed. Um, going through the church council, that was just so smooth compared to how we tried with other churches and we tried in so many places. Mm. Um, so just the admin was so smooth. Um, and then also like the first um, night, I think we had, we tried to make, we had 27 guys and we were trying to make clothing parcels so that everybody had clothes to change into. And we never give out things unless there's enough for everybody. So we were really hoping we were going to have enough items for um, everyone to get. And when we counted, we had exactly 27 parcels for That's the 27 amazing. guys. That's so cool. And it was like incredible. Yeah. Um, and then like yesterday, one of my favorite ones was we had so much bread. I don't even know where it came from. If you watching and it was you, thank you. <laughs> um, but we had so much bread and I was like, what are we going to do with all this bread? And then the next thing, um, Oliver from Hotel Hope, came in and to bring some some guys to come join the shelter and i was like do you need bread and he was like you'd never believe my baker this morning said they can't supply me my 30 loaves of bread that i ordered because they're all sold out um and i was like wow i have bread for you so that was just incredible like to just see how the the, the immediate needs of people are being met mm. and it's just all coming together um we haven't had any lack um, we've had everything we need in terms of like food where we've had non-perishable food items coming in um, between the church and my house just to find so many people needing bread and mm. macaroni and whatever and it's just going out as fast as it's coming in mm. so that's been really awesome yeah sure so I think if I look back when I started if somebody told me I was going to be running an emergency shelter, I would have laughed at them. Mm. And it was really, God just said to me, uh, I just said to God, God, what can I do? And God said, share your sandwich. Mm. And it was just simple steps of obedience that mm. kind of led to this place. And God has been preparing people so far in advance. And like, there were times when I was so in despair and I was like, it's never going to happen. I'm not, I can't be used. And it can happen. And it has happened. And I'm not special. Um, mm. So I think for people that are sitting there at home, they've got dreams or hopes and maybe they've given up. Mm. I think this is a time when they can really revisit those ideas with God and be like, God, where mm. maybe mm. was I not obedient? Where was I maybe I gave up too soon? Um, mm. And to just kind of believe in those dreams again. Um, one of the scriptures that was very um, powerful to me is I always used to know that hope deferred makes the heart grow sick. Mm. And I knew that part of the scripture. But I never knew the part that a longing fulfilled is a spring of life or a tree mm. of life. I can't remember exactly what it is. Mm. But I'd always known the bad part. Mm. But I'd never tasted the mm. promise that God had. And I think when people can persevere um, the length of the journey, 
and they know how sweet it is when the hope inside of you is fulfilled, that's really powerful as opposed to giving up and only knowing how sick your heart gets when what you're longing for and what you were created for isn't fulfilled. Yeah. So it's hang in there. Yeah, I think, you know, when all of this news hits about what's going to happen and, and about lockdowns, we really had to sit down with our team and talk about, you know, how do we respond as, as those who are serving in the name of Christ in that community. So when we made the decision in March to go and, um, you know, seek to provide food parcels, uh, hygiene uh, equipment, as well as um, um, medicines to enable people to manage symptoms. We felt that um, uh, we, when we got into the community, you know, we, we couldn't believe the smiles in people's mm. faces. We couldn't believe what people were saying to us because they were saying, okay, you did not abandon us too. You know, uh, amazing. Everyone, amazing. It's going away. Everyone is yeah. going to their home and shutting down. And so um, the response, I think, encouraged all of us to to push through our fears mm. and you know to yes be safe in with all the things that we need to do mm. but really to trust god and mm. you know for for what happens mm. can i also say thank yeah. you to our, to our community that has just been uh, so helpful to us because we've got had such a strong support base that has enabled us really to to be a, a, a big help to the community of mm. exactly I yeah. appreciate all the many ways that uh, yeah. God has given you to support us. Amazing. Thanks, Sikhle. Good luck, man. Okay, so today we've got, um, we've had a delivery of uh, food items for 200 uh, family hampers that are going to be packed. These guys, amazing people, are busy packing for us, um, putting into parcels. Those parcels will then go. Uh, into Alex and a hamper will be given to a family. So we've got 200 hampers being packed today. It's really been it's been mind blowing. Our target for these hampers was a thousand hampers, which we were going to give to a thousand families of around about six people in a family. That has been blown out the water. We are now close to 2,000 hampers. So My like goodness. it's ultra exciting. We have received donations from all over we've received from all over the world from the us from the uk we've received uh, donations corporates have given us a number of large donations mm. many many individuals have given it's just been from all over so we just yeah super grateful okay so what we've tried to do is in each hamper we've tried to put enough groceries for about two to three weeks okay. for a family of six okay and so we have Oil, cooking oil, eggs, uh, five kilos of milli meal, rice, two kilos of rice, uh, pasta, two kilograms of sugar, uh, um, dishwashing liquid, eggs, okay. soup. So two um, weeks supplies basically. Two, two weeks supply of food for hopefully around about a family of six. So we are, like I said, we are nearly at our 2000 mark, which okay. is just amazing because our initial target was only a thousand. So if you keep contributing, we are um, hoping to continue with this um, until the end of the lockdown and then hopefully even beyond a little bit mm. uh, depending on how things settle down. Mm. And how much is a hamper? Like if guys want to donate towards a hamper? So the hampers are 850 Rand a hamper okay. um, and um, that, that gets all those things that I, I described. So 2,000 hampers, 850, so we're talking like 1.7 million has been raised so well far. Well done! <laughs> <laughs> I haven't used my math brain in a while, so I'm just checking it. Uh, but that's um, so I'm running a project for Rays of Hope um, to provide masks for all the people in Alex that are involved in their projects. And uh, so I'm co coordinating a group of 60 women and they're sharing nifty ideas with each other and so far we've managed to sew in the last week 1200 masks wow. so we've got another 1200 to go okay. and uh, people have donated some money so we're able to get a project that's working in Dipswit to be able to provide uh, the balance of masks that we need. Um, yeah, you can contact me on my Rosebank Union um, email which is jenny with an i at ruc.org.za 
and uh, just let me know how you think you'd like to be involved and I can point you in the right direction.